All right, today we're in the middle of an interesting project here in the hangar. Um, thanks, by the way, for watching, for those that have subscribed. Um, I thank you for that. Give it a thumbs up if you like the content. Um, I've been uh, having a fun time chatting online with uh, those of you who have commented on previous videos uh, where we've been doing maintenance stuff in the hangar. And uh, so we have this project going on right now. I thought I'd bring you along and show you what we're working on. So uh, the project today is freewheel units, all right? So uh, if you have no idea what a freewheel unit is, then uh, you've come to the right place. I'll try and run you through a little bit of how it works, um, give you a better understanding. And if you do know what a freewheel unit is, maybe you'll find something in here interesting that you haven't uh, realized before. So come along, let's uh, have a look. All right, so this is where the freewheel unit sits, right here on the upper part of the engine. All right, so what's missing right now that you, is, that you can see is not installed is gonna be our upper pulley, all right? So that would normally sit right over top of the freewheel unit and it's bolted directly to the freewheel unit via these bolt holes right here, all right? We've removed it right now because we're working on the freewheel and uh, in order for me to be able to show it to you better, it's nice that it's removed. The actual freewheel itself is also removed this is the old one that was on there. Um, it's a new one that we've just installed, and I'll show you this in a little bit more detail as well. The other part of the system that is currently not installed right now either is the drive belt, which is a V-belt. It's actually multiple V-belts all in one. And it sits right down here, and it drives the upper pulley. All right, so now we've seen all the individual parts of the system and uh, now we'll talk about how it works. So the freewheel unit is designed in such a way that when we spin it one direction or when it's spun by the engine in this direction, direction of rotation, what we see is the blades up there are spinning in the direction of rotation. However, when I spin the freewheel unit in the opposite direction, you can see the shaft is not being driven right now in this direction. And that is there so that when we do an auto rotation or in the, in the event of an engine failure, that the main rotor can continue to spin. All right, I'll show you a little bit more detail on how the freewheel unit works inside, but that is essentially why it's there. And every helicopter, um, piston, turbine, doesn't matter. Every helicopter is required to have a freewheel unit because in a case of an engine failure, it doesn't matter what kind of helicopter it is, you wanna be able to do an auto rotation. So we've, we've talked a lot about auto rotations. I've shown you lots of videos about auto rotations. Um, doesn't matter if it's a practice or a real situation, you require the freewheel unit to allow you to disengage the engine from the main rotor. All right, so now we'll talk about just a little bit of how it looks inside and how it works. So the freewheel unit itself rides inside this housing here. You can see down inside, there's these cogs, they're called, or dogs, and they ride on the center shaft that comes out of the gearbox, all right? So the gearbox shaft runs through the middle here. On either side, the, the freewheel unit itself is supported by a bearing, one on this side, and then one on this side, all right? And that those bearings are what support the assembly here. And then inside we have these, these dogs, all right? So I'll pull this out so you can see what it looks like. All right, so here you can see we have an assembly that has an outer uh, race that supports the dogs. And then we have these individual cogs or dogs and they can rotate back and forth within a cage. They're supported individually, but they can all move around and you can see they move in and out as necessary, but they also twist and rotate. So you can see here, as I twist the cog this direction, it's a little bit hard to see, but the way it's designed, it's designed to create a larger overall profile in this direction 
than when I twist it in this direction. Okay, so that's why it's important that the direction of rotation is the correct way. Because as it drags in this direction, it loads up the cog in one direction and it makes it bigger, which squeezes between the shaft in the center and the outer race that's in here. Okay, so in one direction, as it's rotated, it forms a larger space. And then as it drags in the opposite direction, or is being dr not driven but pulled, then it forms a smaller diameter across. And that smaller diameter across is what allows it to then drag within the housing, versus when it loads up in this direction and forms a larger diameter, it drives the actual uh, housing here. And that's what allows the freewheel unit to continuously apply power when the engine is driving it. However, as soon as that driving force is stopped, then it's allowed to drag with the housing, which allows it also then to freewheel, or in the case of a helicopter, auto rotate. Wow, that's incredible. I just walked out here and there is a full double rainbow behind me here, behind the helicopter. Pretty neat uh, end to this video. But anyways, if you like the content, um, if you wanna see more of these kind of educational videos, uh, give me a thumbs up, send me a comment, let me know what you wanna see more of, and I'd love to provide content that's uh, valuable to you. So until next time, uh, we'll catch you on the next video.